I think anything can happen in the final. I'm I'm confident, but nervous as well. They could have won the league. It was in their hands at their home ground. Final game of the season against a pretty mediocre opposition. I'm actually very confident. It's a uh, it's a way better campaign than we had it in 22. Like the oppositions that we faced with mm. all the three better team than 22. I would still say because that team was just made for mentality like that team was just playing on the okay we can do it let's do it and we were, we did it this team had a proper play style a 4-4-2 concept uh, having great games players are on the top level plus I did not expect us to be in the final because the moment Benzema left and we signed Jose Lu and I did not expect to go into final with Jose Lu and uh, then and he's I been did key, not expect right? Vinicius he has been the key yep I did not expect Vinicius to play this in a new role playing a little bit more centrally because he's a proper winger close to Ancelotti for that like he, he made it proper prey like I did not see Bellingham to be doing this good I'd never seen Bellingham uh, some playing like this in Dortmund not in England as well so uh, he found a new one and he said it like he, he reminds me of Kaka so yep uh, wow. it's a mm-hmm. perfect way that we had it I expect us to be in the semi-finals but the moment when I saw the draw against City I was like okay our campaign is done I don't see us beating City one more year especially when we were playing away in the second leg uh, I was like I think the season's done we win the league with a fair and square margin but we won it and then the Bayern Munich came I was like no we're winning against Bayern that's for sure like so in the finals anything can happen in the final uh, I'm not saying that we are 100% winners but one of the game like against Dortmund it's still a Dortmund team but I think anything can happen in the final. I'm I'm confident, but nervous as well. They could have won the league. It was in their hands at their home ground. Final game of the season. They threw it away. Right? Against a pretty mediocre opposition. While they have overcome some of that through through you know, in this this in this Champions League season, uh with the wins against Atletico and then, you know, doing the double over PSG in the semi finals. I don't think that they are they, they, I, I just don't see it. As much as I will be supporting them, um, you know, feel like this is going to be a fairly one-sided tie. And given Dortmund's league form as well this season, right? If it were not mm-hmm. for the change of uh, format for the next season, they won't be in the Champions League. So just don't see it, mate. I'm just thinking about the law of averages. It's like how many times is this team going to get done dirty? Losing managers, l- losing players, losing out on the Champions League losing out on the league I mean eventually it should balance it out right I mean eventually they will win something and I feel like you know the because United just won the FA Cup I think the universe needs to balance things out Sancho has to go and win uh, <laughs> Champions League <laughs> what I also think is that by Real Madrid standards right they mm. obviously lose through the group stage but they're knock- in the knockouts they're fairly average Right. They came up against mm. Leipzig in the round of 16. They, then they came up against City and then Bayern Munich. And especially the, sit, the City, the first leg, they had no business tying that game. Uh, Leipzig, 2-1 on aggregate. Um, again, you know, and Leipzig really gave them a run for their money. And similarly, Bayern, if it were not for the referee's whistle blown too early, uh, Bayern could have been in the tie. feel like you know, Madrid have sort of stretched their luck, but uh, Prague, I just don't see them. I, I just don't see Dortmund winning it. I take the point on law of averages, but uh, I think mm. we're at the stage where, um, you know, Real Madrid, Modric, Cruz, these guys have won, have done it five times. Right? They've won Champions League, what, four or five times. I think they've been there and Cruz will be obviously his last game in club football. Royce as well. Royce as well, but Royce again hasn't won what Cruz has, has he? Hmm. Yeah, so uh, it's Tony Cruz uh, and versus Marco Royce, right? Or you could also call it the Bellingham Derby, but I think it's stacked. The odds are stacked. You only need to get one thing right for the Champions League. I mean, yeah, in general, like that's that you, at that peak moment, you need to get things right for the league. You need sustained management of injuries and rotation, all those things. Exactly. So because of that, you yeah. can say that. But that doesn't. But still, you need to be at the peak of your game, the Champions League. Yeah. So it's a different kind of 
difficulty yeah. and that is something uh, metrid has mastered mastered it i think it's the that's a thing between cup competitions and <laughs> leagues right cups you know uh, manchester united winning it right who thought of that right just yesterday there is no one anywhere in the world who would have predicted man united would win it but it was there uh, are you kidding me every single united player was <laughs> this <still> delusional <laughs> actually only no them, one did man there was no fair enough to them there right? was no like, preview to hmm. for the game there's nothing <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No one, no one believe Eric Ten Hag is about to get sacked. There's all this news of who's going to be the new manager. Two or two or three of the five start, starting eleven may not even be there next season. Varane's going to probably Varane's leaving. It's confirmed. Sofyan Amrabad's going to leave. Yet they actually ended up winning the thing and beating possibly the best side right um, in Europe this season. So I think that's how that's how crazy cup competitions can be. They, people can use you know that that mom, the momentary motivation in one off matches but as you as you rightly said prayer for the for to win the league you have to be on your game at or in all games the manager needs to do their best right forget the players in a league you know you can rely on the players hunger and desire to sort of just carry them through but in uh, in the sorry in the champions league but in the league right the manager needs to get it right against different kinds of treat, uh, teams and you know you have the infamous stoke city the cold wet tuesday night in stoke tuesday night. all of tuesday. those <laughs> exactly yeah the stereotype comes because there's a reason to it now i'm just like uh, asking thoughts on sancho and do you think he's ready for a champions league final do you think he'll be able to affect anything most certainly i think he can he's already proved it in the champions league in, in this you rate him in this yes i do even though he was shit at united but i think um, i think that was more of a you know mismanagement on ten hag side right i think he's found his form he he was scoring a lot of goals a lot of assists prior to moving to united um he's done fairly well, well for england when when he has played right so all the all those things sort of play in his favor and he's in a good moment he's hung, he's hungry to prove and you know i think if i was sancho i you know he's just been omitted from the england squad there was talk talk of him he, that he might be getting back but obviously southgate has not looked at that he would be willing to go out and take revenge and uh, i think uh, sancho is a player to watch out for well brand is sort of the is, is the key player in in the midfield and i think against atletico he was terrific right he was terrific in the quarter final but uh, sancho can be the wild card and i think he's a, he's going to be up against kavahal who's obviously in his in the late, later years of his career sancho is full of pace uh together with fulcrook he could be, you know probably possibly make those crosses inside the box he could go on go solo run and he was terrific against ps prayag do you support this idea you you were also you are going to be cheering on sancho for different reasons you know, we always known his ceiling is pretty high i i don't think i would bet on this guy next season or something but right now he's going with the flow and i'm pretty sure that if dortmund are going to win this game i think sancho is possibly going to be the man of the match or something very close to that at least in the top three. he can take on players and actually break the defense very few players can do that and that's also one of the reasons why united paid so much for this guy even though it didn't work out so i think we've seen uh pieces of that in the previous games i mean he's been playing well but we've been seeing him literally taking on two three defenders at once so if he can do that for this game i think that is going to be critical for dortmund yeah, yeah. eighth who do you think is the scariest prospect here uh, in dortmund i would also put as a sancho uh because i feel like he is ready for that i think he wants to show to this united like you know i can i was there but it was all ten hag who mismanaged me who did not wanted to play me and stuff like that so i think it's going to be sancho he will be on the top of his game uh, kind of disagree with uh, harshit regarding more as a ten hag mismanagement i feel like last season when sancho mm. wasn't ready he gave him a proper time he gave him he put him into a rehab or something like that he once he was ready then only he made sure okay now you can go back onto the pitch even in the pre-season this year um, ten hag was playing sancho in a proper way because i remember seeing him scoring against arsenal in the pre-season uh, i feel like sancho is much more a uh, 
a uh, Aiden Hazard type of a player who doesn't give a shit about training. Like, you know, he just wants to play on the match days. Who doesn't want to train properly? That's why Haz- Hazard was Hazard did not work out for Madrid. So I see more of like that. Uh, and I think he will be the most crucial player for Dortmund. But yeah. Uh, uh, also, another... I think. Uh, yeah, go on. No, no, go on, go on. No, I think you know when the Madrid staff are sitting and watching each player's uh, games over the season, right, to analyze how we can control them. They'd be like, we don't have much data on Sancho. He's just play- yeah. been playing for like four or five months. <laughs> He's totally different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's very unpredictable. So I think the best part about Sancho is that he's playing with freedom. He's mm. playing with freedom and he's able to express himself on the pitch. Which I feel, I mean, you know, it may very well be the case that Sancho is not a good trainer. But I think with United, post-Fergie, we've seen a consistent track record of big money signings coming and not being able to show. Because I think with a big money signing, because you're relying on them to win new matches, you need them to be able to express themselves. And I think Sancho did not have that freedom to do that at United. 